Here's a nice one. Uh, how can you network with a particular nightclub, um, befriend the owner or promoters, and gain VIP access? Uh, okay, so I have only three programs. First program, that, um, the, the core program that I have, my mentorship program, very first week. Um, you know, I'll... Um, I'll give you some videos if you want for this first part because it actually answers it. So if it helps people at you know, your groups or whatever, um, I think it's very powerful. Very first thing you have to do is create a living vision board. Who are the people that you're actually trying to meet and where do they go? Because it's very, I, I can show you how to get free bottle service at every nightclub in the world, right? I can show you how to get free drinks, free food, at the best nightclubs in the world. The problem is, it's like take Vegas, right? For, I mean, I have countless videos on YouTube of me having five, 10, 15 free bottles in Vegas and then you know, all the girls and all the lavishness. But if that isn't a path that's towards where somebody is actually trying to be, then it's irrelevant. For example, um, in London here, the best places are members clubs, right? That sometimes have a six month, 12 month waiting list to even walk through the door. But if you build a social circle, you can get a membership in two weeks, a week. And these are memberships that are sometimes up to 6,000 pounds uh, a year, just to even have the privilege of walking through the door, right? So uh, how do you meet these people? It really depends what the girl is, who the guys are that you're trying to meet. Uh, if you're in finance, right? There's a club called The Mark, right? Then there's Hartford. There's very specific types of venues. A lot of guys will try to just go to a club because they, they hear, because the marketing is good, the Instagram is good. And it's like, oh, let me just go to, uh, I don't know, um, Marquee in New York or Marquee in Vegas or Hakkasan or uh, Cuckoo Club here, right? They'll just, and then they're like, all right, well, let me go in. But in, real, in reality, it's a bunch of like kind of quasi tourists that go there or something, right? So in order to make friends, I mean, you know, in I'll kind of give you a, a brief version of it. In my programs, I talk about how to literally make best friends with the owner of the venue. There's a, a strategy. First, you make friends with initial door guy. And, and this is loosely true for all these places other than the members clubs. Uh, you make friends with the door guy. You make friends with a promoter. And you make friends with a bartender of the venue that you're actually trying to go to. When I say friends, it's a commonality. Uh, it all starts with commonalities. So many men are trying to, um, you know, spark interest or attraction. They don't realize that the real connection building is some sort of commonality, right? Um, you and I didn't become friends because I was interesting or I did something crazy and cool. You and I had commonalities, whether it's in pickup, whether it's I was in London when you were in London. The the ways that we, you and I want to keep in touch with each other, it's through commonalities, right? There was that one um, video that you did with like a charity thing, and like I loosely kind of did my best to help you with something, like. There was no, hey, I want to impress you. It was the actual connection, commonality, something that actually bonds two people together, right? And a lot of times people try to go to a nightclub and try to look cool, but the act of trying to look cool makes you not cool. It's a real rooted, grounded reason to stay in touch. You do that with, and I, I we can go into deep details on how, but the bartender, the manager, and a promoter. Once you have that, you now have complimentary entry, you now have... Uh, access to private events, things like that. Then you move to the regulars, the regular people in that nightclub, what have you, right? Um, and then you get invited to more things and it kind of becomes this, this cycle over and over and over again. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe in another video I can talk even deeper about that, but that's the that's the initial answer. Alrighty, yeah, that was interesting because uh, where you said commonalities, that exact thing happened to me uh, back in 2018 when I was networking, trying to get backstage to a particular club, which was like, um, if you know it, Coco, do you know? Yeah, it's nearby here, actually. And uh, the funny thing like, is... Uh, not K-O-K-O? -K 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 yeah. I have an event there in about a week, actually, that we're doing. Oh, fuck, for real? It's it like a huge... It's, Coco right now is blowing up, actually. There's um there's like a really really big music event private events there right now. Damn yeah they yeah I know some of the people there still so uh it had a fire and it shut down for a while and now it's back but anyway yeah like uh one of the people that I noticed would be backstage I just found him in the smoking area one time and um we had a conversation just like I would have conversations with anyone else but. I discovered that this guy had the same surname, um, had the opposite surname of me. My surname is White and his surname was Black. And ah. my my first name is Ice and his first name was also three letters long, but it has a similar sound. So we, we had that uh, commonality and I was wearing white, he was wearing black. So it was like, holy shit, we're twins. And the funny thing is, I'm white and he was black. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it all started. And then after that, I... 
um, met the promoter, the main promoter who was obviously friends with him. And then I was like, okay, how do I get to the owner? And I networked with the, well, not the owner, the uh, guy who was running the nightclub nights, uh, the party nights. And I, I was introduced to him and I was like, okay, what kind of value? This was not like the word on word what was going on in my head, but this was the idea. What kind of value can be exchanged here? And I decided since I was uh, basically helping RST do videos back at that time and running the RST London community, I therefore had access to the camera guy. So it was like, okay, I could bring in someone to film for you. You could use that for marketing. Done. And they let me come in uh, for that first night with my camera guy. I just asked like the group, anyone film here? <laughs> and then I got that handled. And then the next week I went back with no uh, camera guy and they just kept letting me in. So that's just how it was. It was, it went down exactly like that. That was the funny thing.